very sorry, going to be doing typical Brits abroad, abroad speaking slowly and loudly uh, in English. I'm sorry. Um, okay, so this is all about this story. Who would win in a staff battle between Science Museum and NHM London? Uh, I'm from NHM London. And I'm from the Science Museum. Uh, and uh, this all started last year. But who would win a conference battle? <laughs> okay, so um, my name is Jonathan Tysak. Um, I was the social media manager at the Natural History Museum in London for six and a half years. Um, prior to that, um, I was at the Wellcome Trust. Um, I was ed editor of Trends in Biochemical Sciences uh, for the Evil Elsevier. Um, and a postdoc at uh, Imperial College. Uh, and I'm Will Stanley. Um, I'm the Collections Communication Manager um, at the Science Museum uh, Group. Um, I've worked at the Science Museum for the last five years uh, and uh, been kind of the person behind the Twitter account. Um, and uh, so at the moment, my job is just to tell, uh, find and tell stories about the collection. Uh, and before I came to the museum, um, I worked in PR. Um, and then before that, I studied chemistry. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about the Natural History Museum, um, it opened in uh, Kensington in London in 1881. Um, the collection actually began at the British Museum. Uh, that was in 1753 uh, when Hans Sloane uh, bequeathed or donated his uh, specimens to the museum. Um, we're also not just one museum. There is another one uh, uh, in Tring in Hertfordshire um, today. Um, we've got over 80 million specimens and growing. Um, there are 300, over 300 um, active researchers and curators at the museum. Um, there's over 2,000 staff uh, and, and volunteers. Um, and we also get over 5 million visitors each year. Um, the important thing about that, though, is there are 5 billion people who don't come to the museum each year. And that's why we're on social media, because they can't see us. We can show them. Um, next door is the Science Museum, uh, and across the road from us is the Victoria and Albert Museum. So, to tell you a little bit about the Science Museum, uh, we were officially founded in 1909, uh, so at that point we split from the V&A, um, but our history stretches back to the Great Exhibition in 1851. Um, and that's where quite a lot of our uh, collections come from. Uh, today, um, we have uh, just over 7 million items in the collection. So that's a mix of 3D objects, photographs, and archive material. Uh, and that's everything from um, the British, uh, first British prototype of Concorde, uh, right the way through to um, the spacesuit worn by um, British ESA astronaut Tim Peake uh, that we acquired last week and is, has just joined the collection. Um, there's uh, over 500 staff um, that work at the museum. That includes um, curators and uh, many others. Um, and, uh, and we have uh, just over 3, million, three million visitors um, each year. Um, we're also part of a group. Um, so as well as the Science Museum in London, um, there's the National Railway Museum um, up in the north in York, um, the National Science and Media Museum in Bradford, and the Museum of Science and Industry in Manchester, um, and then uh, another museum that's just joined the group called Locomotion um, up in County Durham. Um, and so together with the, the Science Museum group. Okay. Um, any museum people here who take part in Ask a Curator Day? Yes? Okay. Um, so this is a bit of background to how Museum was started. Um, it's, the day was actually called uh, Ask a Curator Day. Um, this is an annual event on Twitter that started in 2010. And it's a way for people to ask direct questions to uh, experts uh, at various um, cultural and scientific institutions. Um, it's actually a global event now. Um, and in 2017, over, over 1,500 um, uh, institutions took part across the world. Um, before I get onto that, um, I actually wasn't going to do anything on this day um, because I was really busy with work. Um, so I wasn't actually going to participate. Um, but I was getting bored. So I looked at Twitter, and this has popped up. Who would win in a staff battle between Science Museum, Nenich, and London? Well, what to do about that? Um, we have dinosaurs. No contest. <laughs> <coughs> Um, and it, thank you for the talk. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And so at that yeah. point, I saw, I saw this tweet, uh, and there was no way I was going to let dinosaurs win. Uh, and so the whole battle started from, uh, from there. 
Yep. So this, this was our response. Um, <laughs> we are indeed full of old fossils, but we have robots, dinosaurs, pterodactyls, venomous creatures on Earth, uh, volcanoes. Yeah, this is all one nightmanship. But basically, the idea behind doing this was to show actually we aren't just dinosaurs. We are lots of other things as well. Um, so we were putting, you know, this got going by, um, I saw Will was tweeting, and I'd, you know, write my tweet based on what he had done. Um, so, and this is how it progressed. Uh, and we wanted to try, so there, there, was no, there was no plan. I had no idea what, uh, what Jonathan was sharing. He had no idea what I was doing. Um, and so it was, uh, I was just kind of picking objects that I felt, felt right. Uh, and, uh, and this one seemed particularly fun um, to, to, to share. Um, and again, most people wouldn't think we'd have a pair of wellies as part of the collection, but we do. Um, so there's quite a lot we're missing out here, but um, I've shown this slide um, for a couple of reasons. The first is um, it's just amazingly good looking. Um, loads of beautiful, beautiful photos at the top there. Um, at the bottom, something slightly more unusual. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but that's a mouse being eaten by a, um, a locust. Um, so the, the idea behind that was showing actually um, the bad can also be beautiful, um, but also that everything in the world is actually important to it. So one of the um, uh, drivers I have for social media for the museum is actually um, things that you dislike still are important too, and it's trying to get that across. <laughs> so I, I saw the locusts and I was like, oh, what, what, what have we got? Um, and it turns out we have a giant killer, uh, this British made in insect swatter. Um, so it was, uh, it was really, you know, it was quite fun um, for me personally going through and finding um, new objects in the collection that I had no idea we had. Um, and, and I hope it was fun for everyone else that was following our tweets. Um, but so it's a really good chance to pull out objects that normally, um, you know, most people wouldn't see. Um, the vast majority of, of our collections and for most museums um, are in storage and, and kind of out of sight. Um, so this was a really good way to, to highlight some of those uh, more uh, objects. So um, seeing this one, um, this gave me the opportunity to uh, highlight that the museum is actually quite old and we have a long history. Um, and... Um, in our collection, we have a beetle that was um, shot out of the sky by Victorians. Um, so it, this is an opportunity for us to tell slightly unusual stories about our collection as well. Um, so this one was actually put under an x-ray, and you could see the uh, bullets inside the beetle. Th these things are huge, by the way. Um, and the reason they had to shoot them is because they, could, they fly up in high canopy in the trees, so you can't actually catch them uh, at the time. So this is an opportunity for us to start sharing some of our more unusual stories about the museum. <laughs> uh, and so that was, that was our response. Um, <laughs> and uh, I think one of the, yeah, one of the, the nice things um, for this was that it was completely untanned. It was, it was entirely spontaneous. You know, I had no idea what, what Jonathan was going to share. Um, and, and so there's this really lovely flow jumping from an object in the Science Museum collections to, to one in the NHM and then back again. And that um, if we'd planned it, you just wouldn't have happened. Um, and so I think it was actually more, um, more fun for people to, to see the tweets because it was completely spontaneous and, and unplanned. Yeah. Uh, quite a lot of people were asking us or saying afterwards, oh, this is a marketing stunt. Uh, we've all pl we planned this, and we were going, no, not at all. <laughs> this, was just making, you know, this was just literally messing around. Um, <laughs> so a um, couple of other things that I started to do um, is knowing your audience on Twitter as well. Um, so uh, Game of Thrones. We see people talking about it on Twitter, so why not throw in a reference? And also, it gave us a chance to highlight our archive uh, collections. We're not just objects, we're also um, books and prints and paintings and artworks. Um, we have uh, lots of wonderful models in the collection, so um, the, the little uh, bathscope was um, one of my favourites, and it was a great chance to get that out there to escape from the, the sea dragons. And the other thing is, obviously, um, a lot of our followers are actually scientists or um, geeky. Um, so getting in references that's going to appeal to them, you know, uh, an amazing satellite from the Science Museum and a reference to Star Trek. Star Trek. Um, so fan, fan service, as they call it. Um, 
So we were targeting our geeky followers as well, as well as getting a new audience for this. Um, and this one, um, as I say, the museum's also a scientific institution. Uh, so the one at the top, I'm trying to highlight the fact that actually we're not just this dusty old museum with dusty old collection. We're actually out there doing stuff. Um, the guy who took this photo is actually in Antarctica right now doing more research. Um, by this point, though, I had to go to a meeting, um, so this two was, hour long meeting. And this was the only bit of planning that we did, was <laughs> yes. jo Jonathan sent me a DM being like, I've got this meeting to go to, can we, can we call it a day? So, so that, was, that was the only planning that happened. Yeah. So we decided to wrap it up and call a truce. Um, so going back to the guy who started it, um, yeah, thanks for starting it and thank you, game over. Okay, so I'll let Will talk about the next bit. Sure. Um, so people really liked our battle. Um, this is um, the Science Museum's uh, Twitter stats for um, the whole of September. Um, and the, uh, interestingly actually, so the day we started is this spike here. Um, we finished on the, um, on the Thursday and then there's this massive long tail of people kept discovering the battle and be like, oh, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen um, over and over, over about the next kind of week or so. Um, so there's um, three or four million times that our, um, collectively that our tweets were, were seen uh, and then again millions more in the, um, the media coverage um, that, are, that appeared. Um, Jonathan, if you want to... Yeah, so um, just to point out on this one, uh, we've got very similar curve as well, um, but what was notable for us was that actually the number of people following us after the uh, uh, battle was higher than beforehand as well, so that it had a uh, noticeable impact. Yeah. Um, and it went global, so Stephen Fry liked our battle, which was, was really exciting to see. Um, and uh, the, uh, another interesting thing is that our, you know, messing around and having fun on social media um, drove media coverage. So we actually, you know, we got some great um, PR out of, um, out of having fun. Uh, the, um, and there's, like, the, the battle was um, used and shared in really interesting ways. So the whole th thread of tweets was translated into Russian and shared um, among um, museum people in Russia. The um, NPR, uh, the American radio station, um, did a dramatic reading of the tweets and broadcast that, which was great. Uh, the New York Times uh, uh, sort of described it as, as both institutions being very witty, which is obviously lovely to hear. Um, and so, yeah, so the, um, it's, it just went absolutely crazy. And it was really great seeing so many people enjoying the fact that we have these amazing collections and that we were having a bit of fun kind of sharing them. Um, and we also got coverage in Spain. Uh, <laughs> uh, and what was, um, what was really interesting, actually, that a lot of the media coverage was not about us being science museums. It was just about us being museums and, um, and museums kind of interacting in, in different ways. Uh, and that it, it was of interest, you know, I, I didn't really expect it would be of interest to, to people that, that didn't speak English. But, but clearly there was, there was interest across the world from it, which was, was lovely to see. Uh, and just to highlight this, um, if you're keen to get website traffic, um, get it on IFL Science because you just get an enormous spike in your traffic to your website when that happens. Um, it, it was noticeable for us, um, most of the, a bit of the collection is uh, online and, uh, and it was noticeable for the September and, and kind of months afterwards, the most visited objects were all the ones that we shared in the battle. Yeah. Okay, um, so that was Museum Wars. Um, there's a few other things that both Will and I have done, um, which I'll, we'll talk about very quickly. Um, so um, it's not just talking about your own museum. We've done a few things in London where we've gone and talked about other venues. Um, so we got to go across the road to the Victoria and Albert Museum um, and take photos of their collection, but talk about it from a natural history perspective. So um, this one, um, Samson with his um, uh, uh, jawbone, um, about to kill somebody, us. Um, uh, and we were able to tell a story about that from a natural history perspective, um, which uh, you know, um, sparked off a quite a nice discussion about um, you know, the way animals are used in war, um, which is quite nice to see. Um, and then 
And so recently? We had a, a, a partnership with the um, British Library. So for the Harry Potter exhibition that is extremely popular, um, we, uh, we lent a number of, um, of objects that we look after to that exhibition. Um, and after a few um, tweets with the British Library, um, we decided to um, we take over their Instagram accounts um, for the day. Um, so we shared um, a number of uh, posts about the objects that, that we'd loaned to the exhibition. Um, and we also told a, a brief history of um, alchemy through a, an Instagram story. Um, and what was really lovely for... Um, for us was that we got a chance to, to tell stories about our collections to a new audience um, for the British Library. Um, they got a whole load of stories that they normally wouldn't be able to tell. Um, they had a, um, a big increase in, in followers for their accounts, and, and we had an increase too. Um, what was great was that J.K. Rowling retweeted stuff, which was brilliant. Um, we had... Um, uh, we'd written a, a blog post about some of the objects that, were, that we'd lent that... Um, I had something crazy like 4,000 views in a day, basically following from, from uh, J.K. Rowling tweeting. Um, but it was a really lovely um, way to, to work with an institution that normally we, we wouldn't um, be able to work with that has quite different collections. Uh, and then I wanted to talk briefly about um, Super Bowl. So um, the last few years, um, and it's definitely not just us that have done this, um, but we, we've shared some of our Super Bowls from the collection. Um, Jonathan, in the past, has shared some superb owls. Yep. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and so this is, uh, this is one of the ones that, that um, we shared in a thread on, uh, on, on Twitter in February. Um, and again, a, a great way to get um, bits of the collection that normally um, wouldn't always be seen um, out there on, on social media. And also get it in front of people who wouldn't ordinarily see it, because obviously most people following Super Bowl will be looking for the American football, not... Superb bowls. <laughs> um. <laughs> Um, and then uh, this is a, another recent example. So there was a, a big snowstorm in New York, uh, and a number of um, New York institutions started having a snowball fight um, with, with their collections. Uh, and so the, uh, the V&A was um, encouraging um, uh, both us and the, the NHM to, to get involved. And so we had a, a mini snowball fight sharing um, some objects from, from our collections. Uh, and it was great to see that <laughs> people in, enjoyed that. Uh, and then uh, finally, so um, uh, this is Nick, who's the, the, the man behind the first tweet. Uh, and um, the next month after the kind of battle had died down, um, I, um, I took him and his partner around the museum before it opened as a, as a little thank you. And so he was uh, delighted to get to see the museum. It was all, um, all quiet. And that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, well, thank you. Um, si tenéis alguna pregunta, any any questions? Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, did you know each other before this? Uh, we had met a few times beforehand. Yes, so. Um, uh, I wasn't actually sure it would be Will doing it because the Science Museum has more people doing Twitter than I, I, I did at the time. Um, so after the first few, I was actually tweeting Will, uh, direct messaging saying, is that you, Will? <laughs> so I kind, of, I kind of could tell from the way he was, the, the, uh, the writing, that it probably was. Yeah. Um, thank you. This, this, this is great. This is great for us working in social media. And for me, I, I also teach social media for uh, prospective science communicators. So your Twitter battle is, is going to be an example in my classes. So thank you for this. Well, the question I have is, um, what is it, it's, I, I believe that for all institutions, it's great to have an edgy community manager. But my question is, with this, you also get a lot of attention, which is good, but it can be tricky with the relationship with the board or the people working in the museum. How was that battle? This was received very well um, in my museum, um, partly because it was very good um, publicity. Um, Luckily, I've, I've been working at the museum for uh, you know, over six years at this point, so um, everything that we were putting out um, was stuff that had already been approved, in a sense. Um, but I'm also the first social media manager for the museum, so how social media me is done at the museum is basically I wrote the book on it. So um, if there were problems with it, um, nobody's ever told me. <laughs> um, 
So, yeah, I think it, it's a lot about trust. So um, yeah. I um, looked after Twitter for the Science Museum, and it was very much, uh, um, you're in charge, you, you know, you know what you're doing, don't mess up, um, kind of thing. And, and for all of this, it just it felt right, and it, it felt like a... You know, at, at the time when it started, it was like, oh, it's this quite fun and I'm enjoying it. And then it kind of, you realize other people had started kind of following along and tweeting. And then it's like, oh, this, um, this feels like it's got legs and it's going somewhere and we should, we should keep going. Um, and certainly by the next day, it was kind of obvious that, that people had really enjoyed it. And so it's just about kind of getting it to the right, the right length. And the, the, the other thing is, if, you know, I have made mistakes in the past as well. Um, so I've had people at the museum say, I think that's not actually right. And it's just making sure that you um, are honest about it. So, you know, oh, silly mistake. Um, actually, I meant to say this. Or um, uh, if you see it straight away, obviously, you delete it straight away. But if you've left it up, then the response is just to go back and reply to yourself saying, oops, made a mistake, and it should have said this. OK. More questions? Yeah. Uh, Jonathan, you mentioned that in your institution there are mm, active researchers. Mm -hmm. What do they what do they do? And do they do they have uh, contact with the public that come to the museum? Yes. So um, the museum's actually very uh, um, uh, pushes public engagement with uh, the public very heavily. Um, uh, in particular, is there, there's a, an event every day called um, Nature Live, which is um, uh, studio-based, uh, and it's um, got a, a science communicator as a host asking questions of the researcher about what they're doing at the time. Um, and that's for the general public to come in and actually hear what they're working on, see specimens that they're looking at, uh, and get to ask questions about them and, and come and you know, touch them at the end or, or have a look at them at the end. Um, we have lots of events at the museum where the scientists are actually out on the, on the floor. Um, in, in actual fact, in September, at the end of September, um, we have something called Science Uncovered as part of European Researchers' Night. Um, and that's that, that you have over 200 scientists out in the museum with their, uh, what they're working on um, to talk about it with the general public. So, yeah, they're very big on it. Well, your museums are most, uh, some of the most known and important. And how many people is, is there working uh, in the social media and the communication of science? Um, at the time, on the, on the museum's main accounts, there was just me. Um, usually there's two people. Um, but we also have lots of um, other accounts on Twitter in particular, which are run by curators or scientists. Um, so th there are actually about 30 museum accounts on Twitter. Um, and that gives people the opportunity to talk about their work directly or interact directly with our scientists. Um, in and, and we have, um, so in the Science Museum, the communications team is about uh, 10 people, um, and that's um, for um, press and marketing and social media. Um, and we, um, for social media, we um, share it out amongst the team, so there's a, a champion for each channel. Um, so I was the Twitter champion, and then there was um, a colleague that looked after Facebook and, and Instagram. So um, rather than having just one person that did it all, we, we sort of shared it out. Thank you very much. Alguna pregunta más? I, I wanted to ask you, because uh, Oscar just uh, told me when we were watching your, your talk, um, about the Super Bowl one. Is not a spam only because it's nice and good and we support it? <laughs> Why is it not spam? Um, I mean, I guess we... So I've done it a couple of years running, and it kind of... Um, it felt like it would be quite unexpected for um, people that uh, were um, just following it for the football. Um, and, and I quite liked that there was this mix of, of uh, Natural History Museum sharing superb owls and then other museums sharing... Um, Super Bowls, um, and that it, there were American museums doing it as well, so it felt like there were kind of enough museums taking part that it um, was a, a fun kind of thing. Um, we have a big um, 
U.S. following, on, certainly on Twitter, so about 40% of our followers are, are based in the U.S. Um, and uh, again, it's kind of nice to do and share stories and content that, that is maybe perhaps slightly more relatable to, to them or, or maybe they might more expect. Um, and so for our Super Bowl tweets, you know, we were sharing them uh, in the U.K. It was like um, sort of 10 o'clock at night, um, sort of just before the, um, the game. Um, which again is not always when we'd normally tweet, so hopefully that um, more of our American followers kind of saw it. Um, and generally the response was, was really good. You know, people were like, oh, this is great, I'm glad, you know, that kind of thing. I'll, I'll, I'll just add on that. Um, wouldn't ordinarily just jump on a hashtag without any reason? Um, and for that one, they had already been established by other institutions. So when we started doing it, actually it had been going for a couple of years and people were actually expecting it to happen rather than, oh God, why are these people spamming our football um, tweets? Well, what was interesting um, when we shared uh, our tweets in February was that one of the responses was um, basically tagging the NHM and saying, oh, where, where are the superb owls? I want to see them too. So, so the, the people kind of expecting it, as, as Jonathan says. Thank you. Alguna pregunta más? Hi, I just wanted to know if this was your highlight in your career. <laughs> uh, it's, it's definitely up there. It's, uh, it, it's one of the nice things where it, to begin with, I was like, is this work? It doesn't really feel like work. It feels like I'm just having a lot of fun. Uh, but um, what was obviously lovely was that lots of other people enjoyed it too. Um, and then, you know, we've get to come to Seville to talk about it, which is pretty good. So, <laughs> it's, this yeah. is the highlight of my career so far. <laughs> yeah. Def definitely a highlight. Um, I, I, I just had a yeah, comment on that. Um, I wasn't actually doing it. I was doing it for myself more than anything to begin with, at least. So actually, I was having fun. And, you know, OK, it was good that it picked up, but I'd still have done it even if it hadn't. So, yeah. Um, Highlight of my career, though, um, is not anything to do with social media. It's actually seeing something that was at the museum for the first time, um, which was uh, a baby mammoth, uh, a near-complete baby mammoth um, from Russia, which was the first time it had been outside Russia. Um, that was amazing. That was just astonishing to see. Yeah. And that was a highlight of my job as well, is that you got to see these sort of things. Uh, I have a question for you too. Uh, what would you recommend uh, for people working in museums? How should we or how could we interact from our personal accounts with the uh, uh, official account of the museum? Um, we actually share quite a lot of personal accounts from museum staff, but they tend to only talk about their work about on them. So um, there's a balance between how much they're saying about their work and how much they're saying about their personal life. Um, and basically, if you're being very political or whatever, um, we wouldn't share your content because it's putting the museum's reputation at risk. If you're, you're saying something that the museum wouldn't want you to be saying. Um, but it, you know, if, if your um, uh, staff or you know, followers are saying something interesting and there's no other issues, why not share it? Um, they're your staff. They're saying things that they know better than I know, so share it. We have a, um, a list of, um, that is um, kind of private, but, uh, but any um, staff that are happy for the museum to kind of retweet what they've done, um, I kind of keep in list so I can kind of keep an eye on, on what people are up to. Um, and quite often, um, you know, it's good because it means there's more than just me. There's lots of people out there that are, are seeing interesting things that we can share. So quite a lot of our conservation teams um, are, are active on Twitter and they might be, uh, so it might be like a, uh, a really nice picture of, of conserving a, um, I don't know, an old globe or something and that, that we can share from um, of that person doing that. So there, um, there's some really great things kind of behind the scenes um, stories that it's good to be able to share through personal accounts. And that's another thing. They've got access to stuff that we haven't as well. So they're there and they're taking photos of it. Um, so, yeah, share it. Um, as long as you've got a policy in place to cover your behind, um, yeah, go for it. Okay, anything else? If si no, uh, continuamos. Well, thank you very much. It's been great. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.